Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randall, back today with another video. I went to the Nashville Record Show on Sunday, uh, February the 23rd, and uh, got some records there, so uh, I'm going to show you those records that I got. Uh, it's the Nashville Record Show, it's, it's the actual name of the event, Nashville Record and CD Show. It's at the Nashville Palace, the same place I've been to, I think that's the third or fourth time I've been to record shows there. and. Um, you know, I think it's usually pretty much the same vendors. I'm sure there's a few different ones each time. There were maybe a few more vendors there this time than there had been before. There were definitely more people. It was really crowded there. Um, so, um, yeah, it was a good, good show. I had a good time there. So, got there at about 11 o'clock. I uh, went specifically looking for two records this time. I wanted to get Deep Purple's first record, which is called Shades of Deep Purple. And I also wanted to get their third album, which is just called Deep Purple. Um, so those were the only two records I really had specifically in mind that I was going to look for there. Uh, the very first table that I went to had a copy of Shades of Deep Purple. Um, but uh, the cover was not good. It looked like there had been a, maybe like a price tag or something or a hype sticker attached to it with somebody peeled off and took off part of the cover. So, you know, I really didn't want that because... I want to get one that's going to have a you know, good cover. Uh, we're looking for a placeholder here. I want to get one that I will hold on to, you know. So, uh, didn't get that one. Uh, I, the, the, the very first table I went to, I searched, you know, the, every other table I went to, but uh, didn't find one until, uh, you know, towards the end, uh, when I was about ready to go, which is about 12.30. I wasn't there that long. Uh, but that one was uh, the cover of it was really in good shape, but I took the record out to look at it, it, it really looked bad. Um, I, I just couldn't even believe that the guy had actually brought it to uh, sell it. So uh, yeah, just like big, deep looking scratches in it. So I passed on that one, so I didn't even get either one of those records. That very first table that I went to had this record, which is what we're hearing in the background right now. James Brown plays James Brown. This is a record that's been shown several times here in the VC uh, just recently. Um, and this is uh, James Brown playing organ. It's an instrumental album. This came out in 1965. It's on Smash Records. There is not really uh, any information here on the back of it about who, his, uh, who the people are. It says his band. I'm not sure who his band was in 1965. Was that still the Famous Flames? Um, I'm just not, not sure about that. It doesn't have any names on it. But anyway, it's his band, uh, you know, which is horns and uh, so I guess a big band and him playing organ, uh, all instrumental. Uh, so we're hearing Papa's got a brand new bag right now. Try Me is also on here. Um, this is really cool. I like this. To me, uh, well, it's pretty. You know, obviously very funky sound and everything, I guess, but it's almost kind of more like an easy listening type thing. This is something I'll probably listen to in the mornings a lot. Um, it's also got some jazz on it. So, uh, side one ends up with Sidewinder, Lee Morgan's Sidewinder. Side two ends up with um, a song from my father, Horace Silver's song from my father. And those are both treated pretty much as uh, as jazz songs. It gives his uh, uh, saxophone player and trumpet player a chance, I guess, to show... Uh, you know, what they can do in the uh, jazz idiom. So, uh, yeah, this is a really good record. I've really been liking this one. And I was really happy to find it. Just, the cover is in such great shape. And the record sounds pretty good, too. There's a little bit of noise, but not much. We're hearing that record right now, but I got another James Brown record there, which is called A Handful of Souls. So, uh, they both look exactly like this on Smash Records with this red label. Um, yeah, so the same vendor had another uh, James Brown organ there called James Brown at the Organ, Handful of Soul. Uh, on this one, the cover here is really in pretty good shape, too. Uh, this record on the back of it, it tells us all about his uh, musical director, Nathaniel Leon Jones, who was uh, born and raised in Kinston, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, he's a saxophone player, and... Uh, Tells about his biography here and how he's joined as just a sax player, but I guess impressed James and became the 
uh, musical director. And then James has actually written a part over here that's all about him. Uh, all about Nathaniel Leon Jones over here. So, uh, but this is James playing organ with the rest of the band. And uh, this has some vocals too. There's like, sounds like there's probably three female uh, vocalists who are just, they don't sing the whole songs, but like for Let's Go Get Stone, they just sing Let's Go Get Stone. That chorus, uh, they just repeat that a few times. Hold on, I'm coming, same thing. Our Day Will Come. So, uh, uh, yeah, 64, 5, 7, 8, 9. Some great songs on here. Uh, there's also some songs that uh, James wrote with uh, Nathaniel Jones, the, the guy that I was pointing at, his musical director. Oh, Henry, Get Loose, and The King. So, uh, yeah, what, what's good? Oh, the singers, I was going to say, the singers kind of remind me of, like, the, the Ray Charles singers. Those, uh, the, the girl singers to sing in that background stuff. So, uh... Yeah, really cool. I'm really happy to get both of these James Brown records. I got this record by The Creation. This is a record called How's It Feel to Feel? Creation, a mid-60s British band. Garage rock, I guess, or psychedelic rock. Pop, pop music. Um, kind of all over the map. It sounds like all those things. Uh, the, the very first song in here, How's It Feel to Feel? Has some pretty heavy guitar work on it. Sounds really cool. I knew that song by a band called Ride from the 90s, I think, or the early 2000s. And this first time I heard the original, the, the original sounds really good. Uh, they also cover like a Rolling Stone on here. They did a song called Ostrich Man, which sounds a lot like the Hollies, I thought. Um, uh, Boney Maroney, the song that uh, Johnny Winter, uh, I knew Johnny Winter's version, but. This version is really cool. At first, it just sounds like it's going to be some light pop, but boy, towards the end, I get some really cool guitar work on that. So, yeah, Boney Maroney. Um, side 2 has Hey Joe on it. Really cool version of that. So, the whole thing is really good. This is a compilation album. They had one album, I guess, in the mid 60s that was called We Are Painter Man. So, about half of this album comes uh, from that. And then uh, they had some singles. So, this record sort of takes, I guess, the best part of that album and then the singles and the B-sides. Uh, this came out, I think, in 1982. This is a 1998 reissue <clears throat> of that compilation on Get Back Records. Italian label called Get Back Records. So, it's in really good shape. I was glad to find this one. The record's in really good shape. Uh, yeah, like I said, I would call it pop, 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 yes. You know, I guess uh, garage rock or you know, psychedelic or but mostly I would just call it pop music. So. Label, the creation on Get Back Records. The name of the record is How Does It Feel to Feel. Yeah, fantastic. Really been enjoying that one. Baker Garvitz Army. Hearts, Hearts on Fire. It has the uh, cards here. On Fire. Baker Garvitz Army. Uh, I have their third album. I just need to get the first one now. This Ginger Baker, the drummer from Cream, joined together with uh, Paul and Adrian Gervitz from uh, who had originally been in Gun, and then they were in Three Man Army, and they got together with Ginger and called the band Baker Gervitz Army. The first album they were just a power trio, but the second and third albums they picked up this singer named Snips. So here are the Gervitzes. Uh, this is Adrian, I think, the uh, guitarist, and he wrote most of the songs on here, wrote like eight of the songs on here. Here's Paul Gervitz, the bass player. He wrote one song, and here's Ginger up here. He wrote one song on the album, too, and then Snips wrote one. So, uh, this sounds like a 70s rock album. Uh, has some slow songs, has some sort of metal songs. The very first song, Hearts on Fire, is really good. I've noticed the Gervitz Brothers on all of their albums. The first song uh, seems like always has a really good guitar riff and uh, yeah, it really starts out on a great, a great note. Um, so, you know, this has like some ballads and some slower songs. So yeah, it sounds like a 70s record. Sort of, sort of a different mindset maybe than um, the 60s records or. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's some keyboards on here and some synthesizers and stuff, some background vocals. So, mostly it all sounds real good. Uh, it's, it's 
fairly a lot of production on it, I guess. But you know, I think that's fairly typical. This came out in 1976. This is on uh, Mountain Records. It's really cool. Really cool looking label. The other Baker Griffiths Army record I got was on Atco, which was their American label. I think this was the British label. Uh, so yeah, I was glad to get this copy of it there. This is the inner sleeve. Some good pictures of the band there. So yeah, Baker Griffiths Army. Glad to get this one. And the last record that I got there at the record uh, show that day was Goat's Head Sue. This is one I just recently added to my want list. After seeing a review of the album by Calico Silver, he did a fantastic review of it, made it sound really good. And then I uh, was just reading some of the comments there, and uh, uh, quite a few people just say that this was their favorite Stones album. So I had this album, you know, back a long time ago, but for, for some reason I didn't especially like it back then. I didn't dislike it, but it just wasn't one of my favorite Stones albums. This came out right after. Uh, Exile on Main Street, so this is between Exile on Main Street and It's Only Rock and Roll, which I, I love both of those albums. So, uh, yeah, listen to this in again, and uh, I think after some guidance from Calico uh, Silver, I'm finding a way to uh, enjoy this one now, so uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, starts out with, uh, what did it start with? Uh, yeah, Dancing with Mr. D and A Hundred Years Ago, Coming Down Again, a cool one of their slower songs, but then the two hits, uh, Heartbreaker and Angie, close out side one. So, then Silver Train, Hide Your Love, uh, Winner, another one of these slow sort of like ballad type songs that Jeff discussed in his review. So, yeah, I was really glad to get this record. The, the, the record is in great shape and the cover just looks like it was new. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't sealed. Uh, Here's the inner sleeve, and this came with the inner sleeve. Shows the other people that worked on the record, so... Nicky Hopkins, Billy Preston, Ian Stewart, Bobby Keys, Jim Horn, Chuck Finley. So, yeah, the other people that worked on it, there's some information about the record. And it came with the, uh, the poster, too, so... Yeah, really glad to get this one. So, yeah, that's it. So that's what I got uh, at the record show this past Sunday. So, uh, yeah, I'll be interested to know what you uh, think about those records. And um, thanks very much for watching. Hope everybody has a great day.